What's up, fuck fans? And I'm back with another one. Real quick, like, right? Listen, um, I just made a video, right? But I was sitting here and I was thinking of something and I was analyzing something in my head about Nayoya in a way that I find real interesting. So I wanted to share this with you real quick. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. Um, Nayoya in a way, um, is a real unique fighter and he's a real skilled fighter, right? But not only that, right? I believe that Nayoya in a way has the best disguise in all of boxing. And I just thought of this and I was saying to myself, the reason why he moved up fairly quickly in his career is because when his opponents looked at him, they were deceived. They were fooled. Everyone that got offered to fight him all said the same thing. They all said that, you know, he had this look about him. And he looked frail. He looked small. And they couldn't believe that the things that were being said about him. You have to understand boxers' mentality themselves. You see, a boxer, when he's in in, his, in the gym and he's in his zone and he's, and he's fighting and he's in his prime, right? Boxers don't have time to look up other fighters. They're eagles and they're, and, and they're all about themselves. And they don't view any fighter more superior than themselves. And it's very seldom when other boxers are fans, right? Okay. So, the majority of the time when you're offered, when a name comes across your table, you know, you get the name, you hear about the fighter, and you give it to your coaches. Your coaches are the ones that view the tape, do their homework, come back to the gym, and prepare for what they saw. The fighters really don't view the tapes. A lot of fighters don't. But there's some that do, okay? And um, that's why I say Nayoya Inoue has the best disguise in all of boxing. You got to think about it. Man, everyone, even Fulton, he was convinced. They were all fooled. This man is a killer. And that little thing about cheating, you want to know something about that? Check this out. Japanese people are real proud people. And some might say that some samurais were fools because they wanted the one-on-one -on -one all the time. They wanted to knock on your door and let you know that they were coming. They weren't like ninjas in the dark stab you in the back. No, they're very like, um... You know, in their culture, their their what's the word that I'm looking for? They're they're um very um respectable people. You know what I'm saying? And when they invite you to fight, they want you to look them in the eye. They want it to be on the up and up. They don't want no excuses. Okay? They don't like cheating. They don't respect it. If you do something out of a samurai's character, another samurai will pull you up on it. You know what I'm saying? They don't they don't live that way. And I understand we're in a different era. We're in a complete different time. But traditionally, they pass down those kind of morals traditionally down through the eras in Japan as you can see. You know, their traditions are, are, are very different than ours. And I don't think he's down to cheat. You know what I'm saying? I don't think his samurai warrior way and his culture, you know what I'm saying? Where he could come out and win and just put on a straight face, you know. I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't view him like that. I view him like a samurai man. Those people, they have honor. That's the word I'm looking for. It's honor. They have honor and they, they don't like, they won't stab you in the back. They want you to look them in the eye. Look me in the eye and take this ass whooping. You know what I'm saying? 
And he lives by those codes. And some of those, you know, I really believe that, you know. And that's why I don't see him as a cheater like that. I didn't buy that hand wrap thing, the steroid thing. And about the steroid thing, too, real quick. Listen, he complained about the steroid thing. You know why, too? Because in this day and age, in this world, there's a lot of things, the evil things that happen. And will you be okay with someone coming to your house two or three times a week, just putting a needle in your arm? Where are you taking that blood to? This is the most superior athlete. Would you clone him or something? Like, yo, if I was not, I would think of a lot of crazy things. And I wouldn't like them dudes coming in, especially with the corona epidemic going around. You know, they even try to say that about Stephen Kubo faulting the press because the Japanese people had all the masks on. How ridiculous, bro. If you look back at Nayoya Inoue's last fight with Paul Butler, the entire crowd had corona mask on. They were trying to act like they were just doing it because Fulton was there. No. Them people, they got, you know, they they taking it serious. You know what I'm saying? That's the way they're doing it. I don't know what's going on out there. You know? Maybe you should put on a mask too. You know? But I just wanted to make this video real quick and, like, really shed light on that. What do you guys think about that? You know, it's it's just the perfect disguise. You know, he's like a wolf. In sheep's clothing. You know, he truly is. He's a monster. But that's not what you see, is it? You know what I'm saying? And, you know, when we look at the great ones in any sport, you know, they all the great ones are a little, a little cuckoo in some way. Tom Brady, you see how he act. Jordan, he was ruthless in his approach. You know what I'm saying? And Nayoya in a way, you know, he's just, he, he's got that little, you know, at the press conference, after the fight, he gives you that little, that little, he, that lip thing, you, you see it, he's like, you know what I mean? And behind that mindset, bro, is a killer because look at his profession, his job. He's going in there and punching you in the face, you know what I'm saying? He's got that dog mentality, too. Did you see how he knocked out Stevie Kubo and Fulton, man? Man, he hit him. Fulton tried to get up. And he said, if you're going to try to act like you getting up, well, then I'm going to do my job and I'm going to put you down. And, he, boy, he laid into him. He showed him no mercy. And, you know, that's what we're supposed to do, you know. You know, in the sport of boxing, you know, we're not trying to kill each other with respect. You know, we're trying to, you know, put each other away. And when I made that comment and I said that Stephen Kubo Fulton deserved the right to be knocked out, I stand by those words. He deserved that as a fighter. You know, you know, we all say, you know, you know, you got that fighter that gets the referee stops the fight while he's still standing. And he's like, no, you should have you should have let him come on. And then they're in the press conference the next day saying that the referee got paid, he's bought, you know, he wants a rematch, it was unfair, you know, and the referee was just looking out for him, right? He was looking out for him. But time and time again, haven't we heard that? And then we hear the fighters say, how many times have we heard the fighters say, yo, you should have let me go out on my shield. You, should, you know, I, I, I trained all these months, these years, I prepared it for, for this moment my entire life. You should have let him knock me out. Well, then that's what the referee did. He gave Stephen Kubo Fulton the uh, champion's chance, you know. And um, if you ask me, you know, when Stephen Kubo Fulton went flat on his back, did you see it? He was, yo, he was straight. He was out like this, straight out. You know, I thought it was over. Kudos to the referee, not just to go like this, because a more inexperienced referee would have called it right there. You know, he must have saw something we didn't see. He saw Fulton's eyes were still open or something. He was looking at him or something that the referee must have said, well, he's not out. You know what I mean? Because his manner is his body. He was stretched. He was stretched, you know. And, um, yeah. Yeah, these are a couple of points that I needed. I, I forgot to put in, in the video. And I was like, damn. So I just didn't want to leave him out. You know, I thought it was real interesting that, you know, ironically, the monster is perfect in so many different ways.
you know, he's got like that perfect disguise, but he's, he, you know, he can back it up. And he's got the power and all the, all these skills to go with it. And, um, you know, he's, he's really unique, you know, so let me know what you think, you know what I'm saying? Do you think he has the most perfect disguise? It, does he entice people to fight with him? Does he fool people by his, by what he looks like? That they're like quickly, man, I got, who, who, what does he look like? Oh, yeah, yeah, I put my belt on the line. No question. You know what I mean? Because they just can't believe it. They just can't believe it. But now it's going to get tougher from here on out for Nayoya Inoue because the entire world knows who he is now. And they're all the footage and all them tapes that they got on them. Every coach is about to watch that. And they're going to start to see and start to develop a game plan. And there's a kid out there right now watching Nayoya Inoue, idolizing him right now. And one day that kid is going to fight Nayoya Inoue. And he's going to give Nayoya Inoue the best fight of his life. That's what Nayoya Inoue is waiting for, for a man to come up and challenge him. And sometimes he looks bored in that ring and he made this look easy, right? He's just waiting. Every time he steps in that ring, he looks across the ring to that guy and he asks himself that one question, are you the one? Bap, bap, bap. No, you're not. Next. On to the next one. Peace.